Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are microbeads. I'm Eric Schneiderman, the New York State Attorney General, and I'm here with a group of outstanding public servants as Buffalo is leading the state and New York State is leading the nation at dealing with a little known but extraordinarily serious threat to our environment, to our health, uh, and to our wildlife. Microbeads uh, are not widely known, but we are uh, on the case in New York and we are going to set an example for the country. And I think we're going to actually, this is an environmental problem we will solve. I'm joined today by great public servants and allies in this fight for clean water, clean air, and healthy New York. Congressman Ryan Higgins, the great mayor of Buffalo and a colleague of mine for a long time, Byron Brown, your great county executive, uh, Mark Poland Cars, uh, Assembly Member Ryan. And we're also joined, oh, and, uh, and Niagara Falls Mayor Paul Deister. Thank you very much. Uh, we're also joined by several environmental advocates and scientists who are working on this issue. Um, Dr. Sherry Mason from SUNY Fredonia, uh, Jill Jedlicka, who is uh, the executive director of the Buffalo Niagara Riverkeeper, and we have representatives from other uh, environmental groups, NYPIRG, the Sierra Club, uh, and we also are joined, and I'm happy to have a colleague here, Jennifer Narbonne, who is a scientist in my Environmental Protection Bureau. And uh, we're going to be actually talking about her work today because uh, when my office decided we were going to try and take on the problem of microbead pollution, we knew we would have to do some public education and some consciousness raising about it. So we asked Jennifer and some of her colleagues in the Environmental Protection Bureau to take a look at the problem, do some research, and today we are releasing the results of that research, which is this report, Unseen Threat, uh, How Microbeads Harm New York Waters, Wildlife, Health, and Environment. And this, uh, this report makes it very clear that the biggest problem in the state with microbeads has to do with uh, the water in Lake Erie. And that's why I'm so proud to be here today with this united front of the folks who are turning Buffalo around and turning uh, Erie County around to make uh, sure that our economic development activities and our clean environment grow together. Microbeads are plastic beads, usually less than a millimeter uh, in diameter, and they're added to facial scrubs, uh, body washes, toothpaste. They're added to a lot of products, and they're designed just to wash down the drain. Um, they wash down the drain, and then they can go through wastewater treatment plants because they're so small, and the plants are not designed to stop these little tiny pieces of plastic, so they just pass through. The residents of Erie County uh, unknowingly discharge a ton of microbeads into wastewater streams every year. Um, statewide, it's 19 tons a year. And our wastewater treatment plants, uh, Bird Island plant here and hundreds of other plants across the country, were never designed to deal with this problem. We don't need to use microbeads. There are alternatives, and we are uh, we've moved legislation, uh, and I'm hopeful that we will pass it and get it signed this year, uh, that will ensure that microbead production is not just phased out in New York, because once these manufacturers stop doing it, this will be a solution to the problem nationwide. Um, this is a threat to public health that we can deal with. Often, when we're working on environmental issues, it takes an incredibly long time, and you can have a lot of failures before you have success. But thanks to the leadership of the people here, and, and really I have to say, Congressman Higgins, uh, County Executive Poling Cars, Mayor Brown, Buffalo is on the move again. The waterfront here is more active than it's been in a long time. And we want to make sure that our lakes are clean and that the fish you catch in them are safe. The uh, threat posed by microbeads uh, is a particular problem in the Great Lakes. The concentrations of microbeads in the Great Lakes is far higher than the concentration in the oceans. And as shown in this report, Lake Erie is a particularly high concentration of microbeads. So the research that was conducted by Dr. Mason and others has shown us what the problem is, shown us what they can do. I've introduced, it, as I said, an Attorney General's program bill, uh, the Microbead Free Waters Act, which will prohibit the sale in New York of any personal care product containing these dangerous little pieces of plastic. We are already in New York in the forefront of dealing with issues related to plastic pollution. Um, as you know, we added plastic uh, bottles 
to the uh, bottle bill. Uh, we have plastic bag recycling in large stores. But in enacting this ban on microbeads, we are uh, leading the nation. And honestly, I think we're going to solve this problem for the nation because some of the big manufacturers have already said they're going to phase out microbeads as a result of our calling their attention to it. There are products that have never used microbeads, like Burt's Bees. Uh, and I think that it's something that <laughs> the leadership here in Buffalo is solving the problem for all the people of the United States, and I'm extraordinarily proud to stand with them today. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, the great representative of the 26th Congressional District, Congressman Brian. Uh, Eric Snyderman uh, for again, uh, fulfilling his responsibility to the citizens of New York State and Western New York in protecting them and all of the resources that we depend on for our quality of life. I think what the Attorney General is speaking to is an important issue. It's next generation threat. Uh, to the biological integrity of our rivers and our lakes. And, you know, there's a new series out, and Jill is familiar with this, uh, If Our Waters Could Talk. And if our waters could talk, they would be saying, no microbeads. <laughs> so uh, we uh, congratulate uh, the Attorney General. In New York State, uh, not only will this become law in New York State, prohibiting uh, the introduction of microbeads into our waterways, but this will serve as a national model and hopefully uh, federal legislation that will accomplish the same. So for the reasons that Eric Snyderman has talked about and so much more, uh, it's vitally important that we get this legislation passed and that we move it uh, throughout uh, the entire nation uh, to ensure that we don't run into the problem that we did back in 1971 and 72 with the Clean Water Act. And that is, you know, we've been cleaning up our waters for 40 years, 40 years since that act. Um, this is a, a direct approach. This is identifying problems before they become pervasive. And this is what uh, public leadership and public service is all about. So I want to thank again the Attorney General of New York State, Eric Snyderman, uh, for his leadership uh, on this important issue. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Sir. And uh, thank you. And now uh, the great mayor of the great city of Buffalo, my longtime colleague and friend, Byron Brown. Well, sir, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, certainly very pleased to welcome my friend and former colleague in the state legislature, Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, back to the city of Buffalo, and to thank him for the leadership position that he's taking on this important issue of banning microbeads from our waterways. Here in Buffalo and Erie County, we've worked very diligently uh, to clean up our waterways. Uh, recently, the Buffalo Sewer Authority entered into a long-term control plan uh, with the U.S. EPA. Uh, we have just recently won a, a significant grant from the EPA to address pollution uh, in Lake Erie. And we've worked closely with the Buffalo Niagara River Keeper on issues like the blue economy, uh, using our waterways to promote economic development and job creation in our community. So I, again, I just want to uh, thank the Attorney General for his leadership on this important issue. Uh, microbeads not only harm our environment, they harm uh, the fish uh, that live in Lake Erie, and obviously uh, they harm the humans that, that eat them. So it's critically important, this is a serious issue, it's critically important uh, that this legislation that has been proposed be passed. Uh, certainly as mayor of the city of Buffalo, uh, I uh, strongly support Attorney General, General Schneiderman's uh, microbead water-free uh, legislation. Uh, I will do everything that I can to support the Attorney General in getting this legislation passed uh, because it will make a difference for present and future generations, our environment, and our public health. Uh, again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you. And uh, I'd like to uh, welcome our friends from NYPIRG. Uh, you all are too young, but between 1994 and 2002, I represented NYPIRG. Um, and uh, Mayor Brown made a very important point. Microbeads in the water, and this is all laid out in our report, microbeads in the water are like little sponges for toxins. Toxins move into microbeads, they suck them up, and then the toxins get into the fish. And humans or anyone else or any other kind of animal that eats the fish 
These can produce cancer. These can produce birth defects. This is a very serious problem. And I thank the mayor for, for noting that. And now I want to bring up a truly green county executive, the great county executive of Erie County, Mark Polencars. Thank you, General Schneiderman. And it is my distinct pleasure to be with you today as you take the lead in this important issue. Uh, Erie County stands with the rest of our government partners to call for the banning of microbeads for various reasons, the number one of which we all talked about, which is the impact it has on our environment. Uh, Erie County itself is spending tens of millions of dollars right now on a number of projects related to sewage treatment. Uh, the Rush Creek Interceptor Project is a, is a very large one to ensure that the water that we drink uh, is very clean. The problem is these microbeads, as have been talked about, can go straight through the sewage treatment process and enter our waterways. Uh, we, have to, we have to ban these. Uh, I look forward to work with the Attorney General and others uh, as we move forward in this process to ensure that these microbeads are no longer in our water supply so that when it does pass through a sewage treatment facility, we do not have to worry about it ending up in Lake Erie, which of course is where we get our drinking water from. Uh, as the Congressman noted, it took many years after Lake Erie had died for it to be reborn. And it seems like it's under assault again, whether it's microbeads or blue-green algae toxins. Uh, we must work together as a community to ensure that the drinking water that we have, which is also the foundation of our economy, uh, it's bringing businesses back here just like it brought businesses to this community in the 1800s. Businesses are coming back because they know of our fresh water, our clean water supply, and we have to stop anything from contaminating that. So on behalf of the people of this community, I'm very proud to stand with the Attorney General calling for the banning of microbeads. It needs to be done now if we're to have the bright future that we all know we should have. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, th thank you. Uh, and now I, I am very honored to have with us someone who has done the most, some of the most important research on this area that has enabled us to move forward as quickly as we are on this issue, uh, Dr. Sherry Mason. <clears throat> 260,000, 480,000, 640,000, 780,000 plastic particles per square kilometer. Those are the numbers that we've been getting and the research that we've been doing on the Great Lakes. The first two are from the published work that um, this paper and the Attorney General were talking about, um, our 2012 study, which we were looking at Lake Erie. Um, the most recent numbers are coming from Lake Ontario. That's unpublished work, and so it's not in this paper, and the Attorney General was not referring to it. But um, those are numbers that we're getting for Lake Ontario. So um, this is important. <laughs> these are extremely high counts, as he pointed out. These are counts that um, are equal to or greater than counts that we see in the world's oceans. And this is our water. This is our community. Um, a significant fraction of those plastic particles are these little microbeads, which are in these common consumer products that most people don't know. When I go and I talk to people about this and I tell them that there's plastic in the facial wash, they're always surprised. Because they just, basically, um, Plastic has been a, a packaging material for, for many years, but over the last 20 years, plastic has gone from just being the material that's packaging the product to actually being within the product itself. Um, our work is showing that they are making their way through the wastewater treatment process and the plastics that we see in the lakes are coming through um, from the consumer into the lakes. Um, so I'm very happy <laughs> uh, that the Attorney General's office has taken the initiative um, on creating the Microbees Free um, Water Act. Um, very appreciative that they have put out this, wallpaper, this white paper and thank Jennifer for her great work um, researching and um, well, very well written report. Um, I thank the New York State Assembly for passing the Microbees Free Water Act and I urge the New York State Senate to also pass this before the end of this term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your great work. Let me also, let me also note by way of uh, uh, 
you know, Buffalo and Erie County exceptionalism, that the Senate sponsor of this bill is Senator Grisanti, who is, was not able to be with us today because of a scheduling conflict, but we are very, very optimistic about its chances in the Senate. Uh, now, finally, I'd like to introduce the Executive Director of Buffalo Niagara Riverkeeper, uh, Jill Jedlikin. Thank you very much. Um, it's an honor and privilege to stand here with these folks and these fine leaders and also with Dr. Mason doing incredible groundbreaking work in the Great Lakes. Uh, for those of you who may not be aware, the Great Lakes region is the fourth largest economy in the world. And Lake Erie and Lake Ontario right now are dying a death of a thousand cuts. Microbeads is just one more example of the assault that is now happening again on our Great Lakes, combined with microsystems, invasive species, the dead zone. All of these things are coming together to really impact not only our health and our communities, but our local and our blue economy. Just because it's an emerging threat does not mean it needs to devolve into a crisis before we take meaningful action. The legislation put forth and, and under the Attorney General Schneiderman's leadership to really have New York State be a leader in the Great Lakes and the nation for taking proactive, precautionary principles to address and protect our Great Lakes. The management of our freshwater systems in the 21st century is much different than previous generations. We've spent the better part of two generations cleaning up after the poor decisions and mistakes that resulted in contaminant loadings in our waterways. But we live in a day and age now where we have the ability, we have the knowledge to make meaningful, proactive steps, take quick action to avert issues like mi microbeads before they become the next ecological disaster in the Great Lakes. So I thank all of our wonderful leaders here for their, their ongoing and unanimous support of Great Lakes restoration and protection, and thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you all. Thank you, my colleagues. And uh, uh, I urge all of you to take a look at the white paper. And I thank you for your support. I think we are going to get this legislation passed. I think the governor is going to sign it. And I think we are then going to see companies immediately start to find alternatives to microbeads. Thank you for helping us to solve a problem, not just for Western New York and not just for New York State, but really for uh, the entire nation. And now we'll take some questions.